Okay, so for this second tutorial, um, and I already showed how to make the main base in the first one, so if you haven't watched that one, check out the link in the comments or the little card that pops up right here. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make all the backing elements, and I'll just go ahead and play it through so you know what exactly I'm going over here. Now stand back, I gotta practice my stabbing. All right, so the first thing we'll go into here is this bone verb. Um, that little sound right there. So what it is, is I have my synth mix from the other tutorial that I did. That sound is sent into a separate um, mixer track that is made up of two convolvers and a couple EQs and some compression. So basically we have, and I will show the convolvers first. We have two different convolvers that are nearly identical. So if you look at them here, I use that uh, pretty, and I hate to shit on people. Well, I'm not going to shit on them then. I was, was going to say I hate to shit. It's pretty lame vocal. <laughs> I'll just say that. I wouldn't put this in my track. It sounds like it's, it's, this shit is whack, man. <laughs> but I wouldn't put it like that in my track, but it works good as a uh, convolution source. So um, I'm not trying to hate on the dude, who, the dude who did it. It sounds good. It's just lame. Then the first one is is left just plain Jane, regular, nothing's changed on it. The second one is just pitch stretched up a little bit, so the pitch is a little bit higher there. And then if you look at both the wetnesses, they're both being controlled by this, auto this lane of automation right here. And then if you look at the mix knobs, which controls like, is it on or off, that's being controlled by this mix level switch. So if I go to where it switches at, and you look at the, the mixture amounts here. It switches from the first one to the second one at the halfway point in the beat. Um, and then the way that you set this up is you would go in here, create an automation clip, which uh, would make the automation clip for the first one. And then you go into the second mix and, and do link to controller, set it to the automation clip that you just created. It would be the bottom one if you had just done it, but it's this one, um, the convolver mix level. And then go into your, um, your mapping formula and set it to inverted so it does the opposite of what the automation is. That's what the inverted does. Um, and there's a lot you can do with that, but like I'll, you know, that's all you need to know for this little tutorial right here. And then as far as like what I did with the sound, I'll show the rest of the sound design. I cut the lows, which is just getting rid of some of those mids that can be pesky. Um, and then compressed it pretty significantly just to give it more body and less like heavy sweepiness right it gives it makes it pump more by bringing the peaks down um it glues the sound together is a good way to put that and then again i cut the cut the lows out on it which is not really doing too much there it's just the barest little bit of lows that got cut out um, oh, and then once again, I, I should show this. I also, in the final rendition of this sound, in this version, I once again cut the lows significantly. So I cut 9 dB from the lows, oh, but not just the lows. Like a, a lot of this MIDI sound was ending up being, uh, it was frequencies that were already used in other parts of the track. I don't have to show it. Um, so just as far as mixing it, I killed the lows even more, this little mid-range, not even lows, the mid-range and lows, and then boosted the entire output. So it just made it a lot louder. Um, and then going into like how my automations work here, I will turn my drums on and show you that Once I get to this point where the bass cuts out at, turn the bass on real quick. It kind of like 
fades down just to give it that little bit of a burst and to pull it through to the next section. So that happens. That's the, that's one main switch that happens in the automation. The second big change to the automation is once you get to this. I stop sweeping um, for whoops. I stop sweeping once you get to this uh, part. I cut the sweeps out to kind of add energy and then bring the sweeps back in once it hits that snare. So, right. And, and that just is a good way to add tension. And it also layers with the, the next layer down. So as far as that goes, that's how that piece works y'all. And so let's keep it moving. So then we have the glitch fills and how I did this was I took the mix bus on this sound right here once again. And this time, I put it through a, not a convolver, I put it through a kilohertz convolver and turned the glitch folder on, put an Edison after it, and I'm not going to be able to recreate this exactly, but basically I would like play the sound and then just scoot through these, right? Just kind of move through the, the different um, feedbacks there. And what I ended up with... was that kind of ringy, uh, glitchy, textural type of stuff. So then I took those little glitchy bits that I had and just did, uh, I put an OTT on them and then just swept in. So we have the one on the intro right here, the pre-drop that happens. And then we have one here where the uh, bass cuts out. And I just kind of picked and chose random spots in the sound at least not random spots in the beat the, the spots in the arrangement are specifically to add tension and then this the, the uh, sounds that i picked were just ones that sounded good specifically like they like sounded good with the um with the uh volume automation on them so as you can see right so just sweeping in on all these little empty spaces um, so yeah, let me go ahead and move on to the next piece, which is the little glitchy bit that sounds like this. Um, so what I have here is this little glitch bit. That's not what I named it, but I'm not, we're not going to focus on that too much. It's using a little glitch sample that I had made in a different session, and I have it um, in Fruity Granulator. Or Fruity, was this called Fruity Granulator? Fruity Granulizer. And then uh, I just went in here and messed with the grains and, and did some stuff to it. But the main thing is, it's just playing a really small segment of the sound. And then I have two automations on it. One is modulating the sample start position. So the slice that's being played is getting changed by the sample start uh, automation, which changes this parameter here. Right, so just playing a different little slice of it. And then it's just, this is another really effect driven one. So I have a convolver with the disperse, this, the, the dispersal phase unit on it, which kind of, this this is like the heaviest disperser that you can use. The Kilohertz convolver um, has dispersal units that are like way longer than any disperser that I've been able to, than any sound that I've been able, been able to get out of disperser. It's like a super disperser kind of. Um, so then there's a delay on it. And it's really short. It's just adding a bit more stereo to it. Then there's a an EQ that's EQing more mids into this sound. Stereo shaper. And what this does here, um, if you ever want to mono your sound out, but you don't want to do it with panning. Like, let's say you have a sound that is not mono. It's different in the left ear and the right ear. Um, and you want it to be mono, but you also don't want to like, you know, you don't, you don't want just the right signal or you don't want just the left signal. The way that you can do that is using the Fruity Stereo Shaper. And what this does, super simple. It's so complicated to look at it. In my opinion, like when I first opened this plugin like years ago, I was like, what the fuck is this? So what this does is the yellow one sends the left signal into the right ear. So now we have right signal is in the right, left is in the left and the right. 
And then if we do the same thing with the right signal, the red one, right ear goes into left ear. So we still have all of the stereo information. We have the left and the right both represented, but it's being sent to both ears, a la, um, it's mono now. So uh, the next thing that we have is an OTC. And that's really, you know, a lot of, a, a ton, if you've ever watched any of my other tutorials, I almost always use OTT to kill the tails. And this is the one, you know, it's not the one time that I don't, but like, this is one of the sounds where like the tails were not pronounced enough. So I turned, I left the time pretty low, but I turned the uh, depth down a little bit and like time all the way up. It kills the tails, time down, brings the tails back in. Uh, time even shorter would bring more tails in so the end gains up a little bit just to gain stage it upwards this time uh, the depth is pretty low at 40% and then we have the mids are the, the most boosted band and the, the highs are a little bit less boosted so then after monoing it out I went in and added stereo back to it and then I have a volume shaper here that after adding those beautiful tails kills them once again you see i had you fooled there you thought you were like who's gonna leave the tails for once the tails will be there and i killed them why did i kill him i think the reason that i killed him in this case is just to get a tighter sound i don't know you could leave the tails in. it doesn't sound too bad without them i think what it is is this like if you leave the tails in on this sound you can't end up hearing them after you mix this song way up and have the volume super high and all that junk. So then I have a snap heap here that's a pitch shifter, nice and simple, and it just turns on at the halfway point. Let me, I'm sorry, it's starting to clip from all that different stuff, all the different plugins playing. So the snap heap turns on at the halfway point. So this first half and se second half are identical, and then once this comes, this the snap heap turns on. It just pitches them up to kind of change the tone of what we have going. Then I got a compressor that's um. It looks like it's kind of just bringing the transient up a little bit, because it does. As you can see, it doesn't start right away. Um, and then we have an EQ here. That's cutting the lows out once again because some of those effects can bring lows back into it. Yeah, and that's really it for this little glitchy piece. So I'll turn this back off. We have one more little sweepy type element to go through and it's this vocal sweep. So I took a sample. And that's, well, that's what it sounds like dry. And then I added uh, a low cut. Once again, getting rid of this frequency right here that like if you look at the main bass in this track, it's all right here. So I had to cut the that low piece out and then I put a delay on it set to uh, dotted quarters. Oh, it's set to dotted quarters for one of them, but in this piece, I think I actually changed it to quarter notes. Half notes, actually. This should be like this. And then it's ping-ponging from left to right with a little band pass on it. Um, and the last thing is there's an OTT on it. And so that's how you design it. But on its own, it doesn't really sound too impressive. But when you put it in the context of the track, it uh, helps you know that the switch is coming right here. So if I play it... So it does two things. It lets you know the switch is coming and then it kind of pumps right here to fit along with these first pumps and also kind of um, take some space that's opened up by removing the drums. Um, yeah, so moving it on, the last thing that we're going to show in this tutorial is going to be this sound right here. And what is this sound? It is another example of shitty sound made good by hella processing. And how did it get made? It is a serum patch and a face plant. So without any processing, it sounds like this. And I'm just going to show these patches super quickly because I can't, um, I'm not going to make this the longest tutorial ever. Basically what you have here is this FM serum that is, um, an, it's not even FM actually. I just called it FM. So it's one saw detuned. 
right? With the first saw playing alone, it sounds like that. It's detuned, and then when you add the second saw in and do amp modulation, it sounds like that. So we get that kind of like almost FME type sound. Uh, also, this first LFO is modulating the master tuning, so it's pitching it down. No, it's pitching it up. So it's going from low to high really quick. Um, it's changing this detuning here, which is not too, you know, doesn't change too much. And then it's also bringing the low pass up. And then we have an all pass that's giving it some width. Or not, not even any width, it's actually just uh, giving it some phasiness. And then uh, a distortion, OTT, pretty standard stuff. Um, and then once I show the um, face plant, really simple noise again. So we have sine wave, distortion, 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 uh, sine wave with the sync turned to three, right? So this one by itself, that's just the second group here both going into lane one um, and the sync is on three which which gives it that like sci-fi lasery almost type feel or not lasery it just gives it some tone gives it some tonality so the second sine wave is going through a um, distortion again and then they're both going through a phaser and then it's uh, has an ensemble that is all the way wet when the note's on and then that ensemble turns off, then there's a disperser that once again, this little envelope is controlling the uh, dispersal amount. And I used a filter to cut the majority of the highs out of this sound. So, and that is to make space for the second sound. So then I have it sent through a bit crusher. You don't have to use this one. I would just say like do heavy bit crushing and then also, Almost all bit crushers have a uh, quantizer or some thing. In this one, it's called crunch, but I think it just controls quantization. Um, you want to turn your bit amount pretty low. As you can see, the lower you go, the more heavily it's getting crusty. Uh, it's get, it makes it it's a crustiness type deal. Use whatever bit crusher you have and just make it crusty. That's all I can say there. That's, I don't want to spend more time on this. I've been recording for forever. Um, then I have this patcher that is just a lot to explain. So all you need to know is it's three OTTs put together. This is the depth knob. This is the time knob. This is a high pass into it, low pass into the compressor. And then there's a distortion that's completely off. So these are our three threshold knobs. You get the gist. It just makes it way more thumpier. Um, keeping on moving heavy heavy eq here uh and as you can see i'm boosting the lows cutting this one band that was troublesome and then another compressor that's just doing a bit of light compression on it um and then we have a v clip that's just sausaging it out and yeah that's really it for this sound except for i do believe i sent it through more processing yeah, of course I did. So there's more to go through here. So then I'm cutting the side, the stereo, like only the side uh, channel out, out of the final result, distorting it pretty heavily again, um, and then cutting the lows some more, and then OTTing it again. I know it's a lot, so just this is not that good of a sound anyways. I, my main bit of advice for this sound is don't make this sound. This is too much work for the for the price. So um, there you have it. That's everything in this little th in this little clip. I've been recording forever, y'all. So I'm the one taking this outro. I'll see y'all next time. Have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all the things that you've probably never heard of. I'm sure you've never even. I didn't know if you knew this, but there's a button that if you hit it, it'll subscribe you. And nobody really talks about that on YouTube, and people need to, you know, because people gotta learn. They gotta know. You could hit that button, and it will. Do nothing, essentially. Bye-bye.